The average age of a homeless person living in the U.S. is nine years old. 3.5 million people. That's 1.35 million children. Kids are on Skid Row because their parents are here. Eviction, spousal abuse, poverty, personal crisis, physical and mental illness or disability, substance abuse, lost jobs, domestic violence, cuts in public assistance programs, lack of affordable housing. Dad went to prison, mom strung out, grandma's had enough, nowhere to go, no one to help. Welcome to Skid Row. Franklin came of age in the mouth of madness. Franklin's special. He has a sort of charmed life. He's assumed the mantle of the voice of disenfranchised kids on Skid Row in L.A. You saw the mother get killed. Yeah. He's been on CNN and NBC and Montel Williams and Tyra Banks. They seem like regular kids, but 15-year-old Franklin and his sister, 13-year-old Egypt, are a couple of teenagers living on Skid Row. Franklin was living at the Ford Hotel with his mom, his three older sisters, and his little brother Jojo in two rooms. Crack addicts, sex offenders, mentally ill, armed guards. The Ford Hotel is a notorious nightmare. It's one of the worst parts of downtown. She lived next door to them at the Ford, his neighbor Doris. And Franklin watched her murdered from the balcony. We just seen her running, and I, the guy um, caught her and just started stabbing her. And I think she got like stabbed 17 times, 16 times. Franklin was 14. While the dude was stabbing her, people were surrounding her, but no one was helping her. How do you process something like that when you're 14? What do you do with all of it? I don't begin to know, but especially if you're Franklin and you're smart and you're aware and you're not high, if you're present. Instead of picking up a pipe or gun, Franklin picked up a camera. After that, I want to do a candlelight visual for her and get him on film. And I just started interviewing people. He's a filmmaker. He's got a show on World of Wonder. It's a web series. They gave him a really great video camera. Franklin goes out and shoots, and they put it up on the website. I ain't trying to turn this into a race issue. But every motherfucker down here is black. She hit me first. She cracked my head open. You all right? Yeah. Have you been up there by them big, pretty buildings? It's white. All that money, all this poorness. All that money, all this poorness. Franklin's internalized Skid Row. He owns it, he defends it as his cause, and he represents it. Skid Row has transformed Franklin into an activist. Crime is the only business. It's all about drugs, money. Ain't no motherfucking opportunities out here for us. Franklin has a lot of people's attention. I've been working with Franklin to get ready to go back to school. Esteban Martinez is the downtown regional coordinator for School on Wheels, a nonprofit that goes out into the welfare hotels and the missions to teach. He's been assigned to Franklin's case. He needs extra help. He needs somebody there that's going to be working with him one on one. A lot of the teenagers slip through the cracks down here. Most kids that live downtown have usually stopped going to school eventually. They're in the welfare hotels, the missions, the after-school programs, the older ones just hanging out. Who's this guy? He won't tell me. Right now he's saying his name's nobody. I just told okay. you my name! The kids down there are desperate for adult male contact. This is him when he first came in. He just came in, he's like, I don't know you. I'm not telling you my name. I stood here for like 35 minutes, just waiting for somebody to pay attention. <laughs> Skid Row is a state of mind. For a kid, it's a shameful secret. You're not going to tell the other kids at school that you live in the mission. How old were you the first time you ended up in the mission? First time you came to Skid Row? Twelve. I've been here to catch my life. What'd you think? Huh? It was the worst case of people. Families just grow up in this and have kids, and their kids grow up in it, and they kind of just replicate the cycle. This hurts my little baby. These kids were at risk before they were born. It's transgenerational poverty. JoJo was pretty much born down there. That's his, whole, that's, that's his whole life. They finally got their own place. It's in South Central. It's not great. It's a whole other kind of war zone, but at least they're on the grid. I started school today after a few. I ain't even go, I've been messing up at school. 
and he has plans of going on to college, but he's been so far behind. He's missed school. I don't know. I don't know how much, a long time in school. He knows it could go horribly wrong for him in the sense that if he doesn't find a way to have a functional life, he's going to manifest the cyclical poverty thing and end up right back there. The deck is stacked. But hopefully I can um, get into filming. But right now I don't know where exactly I'm going at. Even though you may have moved on and physically transcended the geography, you know where you've been. You carry the psychic imprint. It's a permanent scar. The tragedy is that they were ever there to begin with. 